This part 83 of ASP.NET MVC tutorial. In this video, we'll discuss regular expression attribute. We'll be working with the example that we started in part 80. So please watch parts 80, 81 and 82 before proceeding with this video. Regular expression attribute is great when it comes to pattern matching validation. Let's understand using regular expression attribute with an example. At the moment, this name field allows any characters. It allows alphabets, numbers, and even special characters. Look at this, when we click Save, that string gets saved to the database. And it's very unusual for a name to contain numbers and special characters. So here is our business validation requirement for this name property. Name can contain first and last name with a single space between them. Last name is optional, so if last name is not present, then there shouldn't be any space after the first name. Only upper and lowercase alphabets are allowed. Numbers and special characters are not allowed. This business validation requirement can be very easily met using regular expression attribute. Let's look at using that. So this is the employee class that we have been working with. Let's decorate this name property with regular expression attribute. And notice that this attribute expects a parameter of type string. So we need to pass regular expression here. So here is a typical example of a regular expression. So this regular expression is going to ensure whatever value that we enter for the name property is going to meet all these validation rules. So let's copy this regular expression and pass it as an argument for our regular expression attribute. And let's build the solution. And look at that, we get a compilation error. And that's basically because of this backslash s. Backslash within C sharp has got special meaning. It's an escape sequence character. So backslash t, for example, represents a tab space. Backslash n represents a new line character. But backslash s, it doesn't represent anything. So it's unrecognized. And that's the reason why C sharp compiler throws in um, a compilation error. And now to fix this, we need to prefix the string with an at symbol. And at symbol is called as verbatim literal. So this verbatim literal is not going to process the escape sequences. Instead, backslash will be treated like any other character. We discussed verbatim literal in part four of C sharp tutorial. So now let's build a solution. Let's navigate to edit view. Notice that the name contains numbers and special characters. Let's try to submit that. And look at that, we get the validation message. The field name must match the regular expression and it prints the regular expression. This message doesn't make any sense to the end user, so we definitely want to change this error message. And to do that, we can use error message property. And this is a named parameter. So let's go ahead and specify the error message that we want. So let's say we want this message. Please enter upper and lowercase alphabets only. Let's build our project. Let's reload this. And let's click Save. Look at that. We get our customized message. Now let's try a valid name. So this has got first name with a single space and then a last name. Let's try to click Save and see if that gets saved to the database. Look at that, it gets saved to the database. All right. Understanding and building regular expressions is beyond the scope of this video. But however, if you're interested in learning the basics of regular expressions, here is a link um, that can explain the basics. And this website is also very useful for writing and testing regular expressions. In fact, this regular expression to validate name um, you know, I picked it up from that website. Let's actually navigate to that website. So, if you want to find the commonly used regular expressions, you know, click on this community tab, and here you can find the list of commonly used regular expressions. Now, to find the expression that we used to validate name, I simply typed first name here, then I clicked search. So there are several of them. I used these, this regular expression, first name, last name. Look at this. Once I double click that 
name there, the expression that is associated with that will be loaded into this text box. And within this text box, we can type our strings and check if they match the pattern prescribed by this expression. Look at that. Mark, for example, is a valid name. So it matches that pattern. That's why, look at that, it's highlighted. On the other hand, if I say mark, you know, that's highlighted. But then if I press number, mark1, look at that, that's not highlighted. Let's say mark is the first name, a single space, and then last name. That's highlighted again. If I say mark, and then a space, and then I, I don't enter the last name, again, that doesn't match the pattern. So very easy to test your regular expression as well. All right, now let's look at another example of using a regular expression. Um, let's say on this view, we also have email. Now, a valid email should contain an at and a dot symbol within it, okay? For example, here, test is not a valid email. Look at this, when we click save, that gets saved to the database. And let's say our business validation should ensure that only valid emails are saved to the database. So we need a, a regular expression to validate email format. Okay, so that strings should contain an at and a dot symbol within them. Okay, so again, I can get that regular expression from this website. So if I delete whatever search string that we have, click search, look at the first one is email validator. Okay, so double click that, that gets loaded here. I can copy that. And then let's use, um, you know, that regular expression with email property. First of all, let's write the property. So email is of type string. Let's include the get and set accessors. And let's decorate this with our regular expression attribute and then pass the regular expression. And again, since it contains backslashes, we need to use verbatim literal. All right, so let's build a solution. Let's reload this view. So test is not a valid email. After it reloads, let's try to save and see if it allows it. Look at that again, it says the field email must match this regular expression. Again, you know how to overwrite that with a customer message. Now, if I try test at, again, that's not a valid email, so that doesn't get saved either. On the other hand, test at test.com is a valid email. Let's click save, and that should get saved to the database. Look at that, that gets saved. All right, that's it for today. Thank you for listening. Have a great day.